I, I liked what we did with the OEL uh, LED screen, and then I'm looking, and we've got the giant just yeah, yeah, liquid we, crystal display mm, for this project. It's kind of kind of toasty. Oh, people have been wanting this for the longest time because although it's nice to run an embedded project on Arduino, you know, something yeah. like lights, mm -hmm. it would add a little extra something something if I had the ability to to control it or at least monitor it remotely. I can think of one instance in which I really wish. I had remote monitoring set up, like for example, when Why my Arduino decided to start feeding my plants pure fertilizer. <laughs> that, that would <laughs> what, have been. What a good would be bad about that? <laughs> except all your plants dying. Dying, dying, mm. dying. Not just dying, but remember, once when the plants die, they stop soaking up all the water, uh -huh. which means the water starts <laughs> overflowing, which means your superior comes down and yells at you huh. for all the brownish water coming down through the floor. Yeah. Why is it uh, flooding up there? And, and so. Partially why you're talking about that too is isn't a lot of these projects that we're doing leading up to the eventual Growduino Correct. automation project that you've been doing? Exactly. And what I want there is I want the capability to receive a notification when any event happens. So right. the lights turn on, the lights turn off, it starts watering, it starts fertilizing, it stops watering, it yeah. stops fertilizing, temperature, humidity. I mean, all of that, I want that logic in the Arduino. So right. it should be able to deal with it on its own. However, I still want to be able to monitor it remotely, either on an app or on or my laptop. Or a separate Arduino. Or a separate Arduino. Yeah. Something that allows me to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be and doing. And then you can start building in redundancies to say, hey, like, if I get this emergency code, shut down. Precisely. Please stop watering everything. Like, if my Arduino just sends, oh, by the way, I'm going to give your plants uh, twice as much fertilizer as they should need, I should be able to override remotely and say, you know what, no, let's not do that. Nah. Let's, let's stop that. <laughs> Yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing, which means we need to up our game because obviously an Arduino doesn't have a network interface. There's no Bluetooth, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Ethernet built into the, a standard Nano or an Uno, which mm -hmm. is what we've been using. In fact, we could even go one step up to something like the Mega, which is just a larger Arduino. It's got more memory, it's got more processing power, it's got more inputs and outputs. This also doesn't have a, any sort of uh, network interface, no. which is why we need something a little bit like this. A breakout board. Yeah, so this is a shield, if you uh, go to the overhead here. This just allows me to plug straight into the pins on either an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Mega mm -hmm. and give it standard Ethernet. So I get uh, uh, Ethernet networking capabilities. So you need all that just for Ethernet? Well... Kind of a big shield. Kind. Well, that's just the size. I mean, look, this is also a networking shield. This one's for uh -huh. the, the Nano. So this does the same thing, because remember, the, the Uno and the Nano are essentially the same. The only difference is uh, you know, the board size and the format. So this is a Nano that's oh. actually on top of the network interface board. Oh, OK. So yeah. it's nice and small. That makes sense. Uh, one thing, though, mm -hmm. this works. This yeah. is fine. However, you're really limited by the amount of power that you have, and you're limited by the space. So although this is a this is a fun form factor to play with, yeah. I would not develop on it. It's, it's a pain in the butt to develop on. But once you have your prototype finished and you've kind of moved along, you could do the smaller one, right? Precisely, yeah. exactly. So what I'm going to do is I've got my standard uh, Arduino Uno here. Mm -hmm. These pins just match up perfectly. So I just put it from the bottom over down. So this is now... Oh network ready. It's not automatic. When I turn it on, it's not like I have networking capabilities. Right. I still have to create Configure. software that will uh, allow it to use the shield. But you'll see I have pass-throughs, right. so I can still access all my digital pins. That's nice. It's actually connected to the uh, Uno via this, which is a, a different bus. It's a, it's a management bus. Hmm. Um, additionally, I get access SD to card. this. I have a little SD card. Remember yeah. in the last episode, we showed people how to use the onboard EEPROM mm -hmm. in order to store values that would not go away when I restarted. Right. So now can we use a, basically a mass flash storage? Absolutely. So I can put, I think this one will take up to 64 gigabyte uh, of memory, which I I don't know what I would do with that, other than uh, using a, like a place to store log files. I was gonna say maybe video files or something. Uh, I'm not gonna run on video. Yeah, through an Arduino. I, yeah I don't know. It's <laughs> that's not gonna work so well. But uh, we're gonna do some very simple, some basic commands, some mm -hmm. basic demonstrations on how to use this, so that you can build it into a project that you might already have. Very cool. I mean, imagine any time you've got the Arduino doing something. Mm -hmm. Once you have this lesson down, you should be able to network enable it so you can make it do that something remotely. Which is really nice, especially if you don't have, like, 
access to it directly. Like you want to put it right. outside or something and not have to walk back and forth, forth from your greenhouse to your house or something like that. Or for example, I have created one of these using cayenne, which is something we were going to cover, but then we cayenne had all the pepper? Persec stuff. It's, it's a, a My Device. It allows me to make an Internet of Things device very simply, very easily. Oh, okay. And I created two that are connected to the, uh, the Dun light on um, my, uh, the washer dryer in our house. Uh -huh. So when that light turns on, it flips a relay yeah. that tells the Arduino that the done light has turned on, mm -hmm. and then it uh, texts the person <laughs> whose laundry was in the machine. <laughs> super like simple, yeah. super, super stupid, but it's like, yeah, okay, why not do that? That's, right, that's no, that's cool. smart. I like that idea. But in order for that to work, I need network capability. I can't okay. use Cayenne unless I have a way onto the network. Yeah. There are Wi-Fi shields, however, I don't like using Wi-Fi for IoT. I'm not a big fan of that because Wi-Fi is temperamental sometimes, especially on a device as low power as like a Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. or an Arduino. Uh, for that, I really prefer something that's wired. That's one less thing that can go wrong. Yeah. And if I'm doing something like monitoring my garden, I don't want a flaky Wi-Fi AP to be the reason why suddenly it's dead. Right. I mean, not to make light of it, but it is kind of a life or death situation when it comes, at least for your plants, as far as getting watered and fertilized. So probably should make it as redundant as possible and, and uh, foolproof. Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. First of all, we're going to do a little bit of wiring because this first example, we're going to pull almost directly from the example library on the Arduino sketch. It's, it's actually one of the ones that are provided when you install Arduino. Cool. Uh, we need to power up these two potentiometers. I've seen those before. Yeah, this is, this is like one of the very first 3D printed boards that we made. This is just a holder for the Raspberry Pi and a little teeny tiny breadboard. Yeah. So we're going to pull 5 volts and ground. There's my ground pin right there, like so. And I'm going to pull 5 volts right there. Like so. And then I'm going to go into either side of this potentiometer. Because remember, the way that a potentiometer works is I need ground and 5 volts on the outside. There's three pins. So the outside pins get ground and 5 volts. The inside pin, that's the wiper, that will change as, uh, as I rotate the potentiometer. Mm -hmm. That goes into my analog inputs. That makes inputs. sense, yeah. Right. So now I'm going to go from ground here to ground here. So I'm just daisy chaining these. You're a madman. And 5 volt here to 5 volt there. Boom. Boom. Now I need to take the center pin. Right. Which and that's going to go into analog 1. And the center pin here is going to go into analog 0. And now the Raspberry Pi will know what inputs to take from. Well, well, I'm going to tell it. Or so no, I'm, I'm going to be telling Arduino. it to take, yeah, Arduino is going to be taking inputs from our, uh, A0 and A1, analog mm -hmm. 0 and analog 1. And as I rotate each of these potentiometers, those two values will increase and decrease. Right. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code that's going to allow me to do this. Let's go ahead and give power to my little Unlimited Arduino power. here. And I'm going to give it network connectivity since we now have that option, which is so happy. How about that? All right, so let's start this up. Now, here is the code that I'm going to be using for this one. Alex, if you go ahead and come over to this computer. Uh, again, this is the Ethernet sketch. It's slightly changed. But if you go into File, Examples, Ethernet, down below here. Ooh, come on, there we go. You keep going. Uh, uh, where's the Ethernet? I, uh, yeah, Ethernet. This is actually just called the web server. So this is the web server example. Here's what it's going to do. It's super, super simple. You're going you're gonna to wonder why there's such a hullabaloo about it. I've, I'm including two libraries, SPI and Ethernet. And this is just the way for me. SPI is how it's communicating with that shield oh, okay. over the SPI bus. And Ethernet's pretty Ethernet self, is, self yeah, That's the library to, to do all the things that need for Ethernet. This right here. This is kind of cool for, for networking, for the people who really like their networking 101 series. Remember how we talked about the MAC address? Mm -hmm. The media access control, it's the physical, physical address. Physical address, yeah. Like your, your Mr. Robot. <laughs> That's exactly how I think of it now. <laughs> but this is the hexadecimal combination that sets the physical address. In Arduino, I can actually set it for anything I want. 
On the side of uh, of my board, there's actually a address that they gave me yeah. that I should use. But you, you I don't have say, to use that. But we also explain the dangers of doing that because there right. are certain devices that fall into a certain bracket of MAC addresses, yeah. and if both those devices have the same MAC address, you'll run into conflict. And especially since here, um, since I could just load this particular code on a hundred different Arduinos. If I plug all those hundred different Arduinos into my network, they all have the same physical address. Right. That's going to be a problem. The router <laughs> no, will just freak out. You'll be all. like, whoa, yeah. where, what? Yeah, you think you're being super s sneaky by using the same MAC address for yeah. like all of them? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you go back to my, my window here, so this needs to be unique. In this particular case, I'm using D-E-A-D-B-E-E-F-F-E-E-D. -E 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 uh, and if I change it at all, yeah. any of those entries, the router will think it's a different device. Okay. Okay. So just just be aware of that. Now this is this is kind of cool. IP address IP one nine two one six eight zero dot two two nine. I can specify it. So I I've actually already set the address that this device is going to be at. It's going to be right. at one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot two two nine. What we will show in the next example is that you don't have to do it this way. You can actually have your Arduino get a DHCP address, so it can automatically get an address from the router. Okay. In this particular case. Because this is a super simple example, I'm setting a, uh, this is a static address, 192.168.0.229. Well, you're going to want a static address if you're going to remote access it, right? Well, yeah, uh, but well, there's, there's, there's ways around things. that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Ethernet server, this starts up the Ethernet, or actually it, it sets the Ethernet server to listen to port 80. Remember in Networking 101 we talked mm -hmm. about ports? Ports are just the device listening on a specific port for a request for service. Right. So this is telling it to start an Ethernet server and listen on port 80, which is HTTP. So it's a standard HTTP server. Makes sense. OK. Uh, on my setup, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm, uh, I'm opening up the serial uh, port, and I'm uh, basically saying, OK, go ahead and, and wait to send stuff to the serial port. Because this has no screen, the only way I'm going to get data on this is by opening up a serial port. OK. Uh, this, this is all specific to our, uh, our networking thing. Ethernet begin. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's calling the library, it's saying, okay, go ahead and turn yourself on with the MAC address I specified above, with the IP address I specified above. Right. In the next example, I'm not going to specify an IP and it's just going to get a DHCP address. Hmm. But I do need a MAC. I need to give it a MAC because it has to be able to identify me on the network. Okay. Then it's going to turn on the server. So the server will start listening at port 80. And then print out servers at... Right, because I need to know where that server is. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up my serial monitor. Oh, uh, I'm going to set it for the right port first. And uh, I actually have to upload this code. So <laughs> let's, let's do that. I'm going to start uploading the code. And as it's uploading, I'm going to go ahead and explain the rest of it. This is just doing one thing. See, in the loop, that's just one clump of code. All this is going to do is it's going to sit there. The Ethernet server is going to sit until it right and hears a client. So it's mm. going to listen. Once it hears a client, then it's going to go ahead and start running through these instructions. All these instructions are going to do is write to the Ethernet port what a standard HTML file looks like. So okay. this is the header, so HTTP 1.1, 200, OK, all the way up to the start of HTML. And down here, we have the end of HTML. So everything that's in this area, this is my web page. Hmm. Okay. And all my web page is going to do is it's going to look at the analog channel, so the two analog uh, inputs that I have, 0 and 1 because it does it until it's, great. it's, uh, until it's uh, no longer less than two. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's going to print the value from that channel. Oh, OK. OK, so let's, but in order for this to work, I'm going to need to know what is the serial address. Now, I mean, what is the Ethernet address? Uh, right. so, sorry, the IP address. The, the IP, IP address, address. is 192.168.0.229, <laughs> which is exactly what it was supposed to be, because I right. said that you in static. Right, you said it as that, yeah. OK, but now let's go ahead and go into a web page. Mm -hmm. And then type in the local 192. address. 192.168.0.229. Uh, was it 229? Yeah, 229. Uh, yeah. OK, so when you, I do this. You can't type in the physical address, right? The MAC address and get to it through the address bar? Um, you could. But that'd be a pain. The, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a, one thing that you, oh, there we go. You have to remember is uh, Arduinos are kind of slow, so it, it can take a while for the service to start up. It can, actually, the longest it's ever taken for the service to start up for me was about three minutes. Oh, just, wow. just know that. But okay. now it's running. In the background, this is actually what the server is doing. So the server keeps connecting, 
serving out the page, disconnecting. Connecting, serving out the page, disconnecting. That's what's happening. And what, what I've hmm. set it to do is to refresh every five seconds or so. Why is that? Uh, just That's just what I did. Just I just, to, oh, yeah. okay, to demonstrate. Yeah. But see, now if uh, you see analog input zero, uh, one is zero, and, and uh, I, I should be able to change this. Actually, I think I plugged it into the wrong ports. Hey, that was kind of silly. Like, so... Oh, I actually... <laughs> That's my bad. There we go. The ground and power yeah, were... ground was in the wrong side. Ah, I see. Okay, there we go. Now if you go to the, back to that page, uh, ooh, you're going to have to zoom in on that. What are we... Enhance. Zooming? There we go. Ah. So if I change, as I turn the wipers, every time it refreshes, you're going to see those values are going to start changing. See? Oh, okay. Okay, okay cool. Okay. But let's... Uh, let's uh, because it's standard HTML, people should know this. Let's, let's jump back over here, Alex. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is I, I don't like those, uh, those things being so small. So I'm going to add something right about here under the HTML. And I'm going to say font size plus six. So it's going to make much larger text. <laughs> uh, and uh, the other thing I wanted to change was uh, the refresh. So right now it's refreshing every five seconds, right here. This is this is just standard HTML. Make it Fiesta. Yeah. So it's 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 saying okay, every five seconds go ahead and, and ask the server for another connection. Right. I'm going to change that to one. Let's go ahead and upload that. So what it should do is I've just changed the code. So now when it refreshes the page first. Yeah. It's going to change the refresh rate to once One. every second. Every and second, it's going to try. Bigger font. And a much bigger font. So Is there a danger of refreshing too fast? Yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. Because, yeah. again, an Arduino is a very low power device. Yeah. doesn't have a lot of horsepower. If, if you start requesting too much, it will just start lagging. It will just... Mm. I mean, it won't break it, no. but you're going to start timing out. But the equivalent of little tears coming out of the Arduino, yeah. like, why would you do that to yeah. me? Uh, let me make it clear. This is not a web server like that you might consider. <laughs> Don't put this on the yeah. internet to serve out your web page. That no, would be no, a no. really, really bad idea. This is just a way for you to connect to your Arduino right. and and uh, and get, get some data back. Yeah. Right. Uh, people will call this an Internet of Thing, a thing, <laughs> yeah. but. Don't think of it as an Internet of Things device that you would actually plug into the Internet. I see. Uh, I see. With a public address. That would be a really <laughs> bad idea. Oh. Super. super. Can, I, can have I expressed how bad that is how yet? Bad? Um, no. Tell me more. Tell me why it would be so bad. Because <laughs> <laughs> little tears will come okay, out of Okay, so obviously my f I, I, mess up. I, I forgot to put equals. Font equal. But, oh, so the font Padre. didn't change, but notice how it's refreshing much faster. So now it's refreshing yes. every second. So as I turn, turn these wipers... Ooh, this is not super exciting because these are just values that are changing. No, but that then means that we can incorporate those into something. Precisely. So. The fact that I can report these values means I can report anything. Right. I can report state of switches, states of relays. I can report temperature, humidity. In other words, if it's a value that I was able to display on my serial console previously, yeah. I can now display it through the Ethernet of Remotely. interface. Remotely. Yeah, I like that, it. right? Ooh, look at that. It's so fast. Ooh. All right, you shouldn't play with knobs that okay. much on TV. All right, all right. So this is what we're going to be doing, but we're going to be bumping it up a notch. Okay. Now, before we go any further, let, for those people out there who are wondering how they're going to do this on their own, you do need a little bit of gear. Uh, the first is, of an course, Arduino. you're going to need an Uno, an Arduino <laughs> Uno. Uh, we've, got, we've got a link here uh, for the one that I prefer. This is the Geekrete Uno R3. This is, is actually this using an Arduino? A, it's, or is an, this a... well, it's a clone, but this uh, is using a genuine Atmel chipset. Okay. Which okay. I like, because there are some that are really gray market I don't trust. Well, and I know in the past we've definitely uh, said you could buy a bunch off eBay if you're yeah. planning on doing a bunch of prototype builds. But if you're doing something like this where the the balance of your plants hangs yeah. in, in the, the power of the Arduino that you're using, you should probably get one that... That won't die the yeah. first time you use it. <laughs> That's silly like that. Oh, the second thing you're going to need is a, it's a W5100 Ethernet shield. Now, this is the one I'm using. Uh, I got a bunch of these. I actually bought them uh, in bulk for like six bucks a pop. Uh, there is one other option, actually, Alex, if you go to the next one. It's also W5100, but... It has PoE, so that's what uh, <gasps> power the, over Ethernet. Precisely, and this is this is actually a genuine Arduino part. Ooh. What this will allow me to do is I can have a single cable rather than having power and Ethernet. This would get it from the PoE port on the board. And five volts, five uh, volts. What, right, right. It takes the forty-eight volts, and it 
That's put you down to five. cool. If yeah. only I had a switch that I had taken without permission yeah, that I did. And if only I still had a switch at my house that I could just plug in and have PoE. And, That's you know. so weird. Yeah. Weird. You're never going to get it back. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay.